let's start with Saturday. Okay. So the early game Saturday was LSU, South Carolina. And I think our biggest need of certainly in the morning, maybe the whole day in college football, because the college football games on Saturday suck, right? They're terrible. But we needed South Carolina big. Now, you you took the points or you just had the money line? I did both, of course. I had three units on the spread and I had a half unit on the money line, but it doesn't matter. They should have won that football game. I got two teams in less than seven days, John Murray, that had 17 point leads and didn't win the football game. When you say unit, when you say unit, what is that? Like 20,000? What, what is that? Uh, a unit for me is a thousand dollars. Like when when unit, well, you never bought the unit. You say three girls said that I did. I won twelve point four five units in lacrosse, and some guy goes, "Cool, uh, enjoy your winnings." Like as a smartass, and I was like, "Dude, that's twelve grand." Well, you didn't write know. black. I'm like, "That's not twelve dollars and forty five cents, sir." So you can put a thousand dollars on that stuff. I had a couple of uh, well, we well, don't even call them your rivals because they're not available in in Las Vegas. But um, confident yeah. they're not available. You know, it's actually really funny. I actually was only able to bet a nickel when I was in New York. Actually, four hundred and eighty dollars is all they let me bet on the championship game. So I already got limited in lacrosse. But I digress. South Carolina lost the game, covered the spread. Let's call it questionable officiating. Is that can we say that? Yeah, uh, it was not ideal officiating. How about that? I think it's like. Bitch about the officials when I lose, but like usually it's the officials or it's a guy named Will Levis, but usually it's the officials. So they lose. We go to the afternoon. I'm watching West Virginia Pitt. West Virginia blew a, they blew a 10 point lead with like four uh-huh. minutes. And then I was also, I had an eye on the Notre Dame game because that was, I know that was the Rumham play of the week with Purdue. Yeah, that was bad. I'm that actually was- really glad that that happened. So I got to watch uh, half of the, South Carolina game before we met up for Ariel's birthday. We got on the party bus. I had my phone, of course, like a obnoxious asshole on the drive out to where the party was. And then I saw the like impending collapse. And I was just like, okay, this is this is not going my way. Um, and then we get there, we start drinking, we're having a great time. Actually, we start drinking on the bus, but we get there, we start drinking, and I see it this an immediate blowout for Notre Dame. And I was like, perfect. I'd rather have it this way. I, I don't even have to sweat the plus 10. I got a great number, close seven and a half. At least now I can enjoy her birthday party. So me, me and some of the guys, it was better on Notre Dame to make the playoff I told you about. So, you know, if you went back. Are you alive to, again? Well, here's the thing. If you went back to before the season started and told us we were going to be two and one, I, we wouldn't have been happy. But we wouldn't have been, like, devastated. I would yeah. have thought that they lost the A&M game, which they were a dog. Or maybe they got upset by Purdue on the road, which is not impossible. The fact that they won AM and beat Purdue by a million and are still two and one, that is strange. That's strange. They host Miami of Ohio on Saturday. You know who's gonna be at that game? Who? Andy Samuelson. Right. So you know how he pretty much goes on vacation once a week. He's going pretty to much. Notre Dame game Saturday, Cubs game Sunday. Okay, who are like? Uh, the other game, the only other game that really caught my eye on Saturday night was I watched a, lo- a little bit of the Georgia game, and they were pretty lucky to beat Kentucky. Yes, they were. And I know that, and I've been I've been part of this crowd saying Georgia is definitely the best team in the country, but they really struggled in that game. And if you look at their schedule, because all these teams are now in the SEC, the SEC is so brutal. Georgia has to play at Alabama next Saturday. They play at Texas. That's, on October. That's a pretty good game, Georgia. I really thought I was going to be on Texas as a home dog in that game. And now I'm going, is Texas going to be a home dog in that game? And, they, and after that game, they still have to also play Georgia's place at Ole Miss. They yeah. All three of those road games, that is a brutal schedule. That is going to so be tough. We'll see how they come out of that. The, uh, the primetime game here Saturday was Colorado, Colorado State. That gives you an idea of how bad the college football card was this week. Not- it really was. And now it seems like this week we've got lots of top 25 action. Lots of, I would call it top 50 action. I mean, these teams are not in um, 
the top 25, but there's still, I think there's still some really good games on the card. Did you bet anything on Noche UFC? Did you watch any of that? I took your advice and I bet against Shane O'Malley. Yeah, I'm Rob did win. I, Sean O'Malley, Sugar Sean O'Malley. Yeah, I did. Now, I, Sean, I, I, Sean O'Malley, I'm a fan of Robert, the guy with the rainbow hair. I bet against yeah, Sean O'Malley. You know, I'm a big fan of uh, Brian Ortega's, and he got his ass kicked. I lost some money. I had a bad day on Saturday. Just a oh. lot of things didn't go my way on Saturday. Bad, uh, bad result there. We did incredible handle on UFC 306. So, it was, it was crazy. So, uh, Brett's mom is, uh, she manages, there's like a bunch of the same bars down here and there's like six or seven of them. And so she just got promoted to a new district and her first weekend, she's like, oh my God, we had the best, we had the record numbers. And I go, yeah, cause your first night at the GM, it was UFC 306. And she was like, well, we have UFC fights all the time. I'm like, yeah, but it was UFC 306, and you're in a different neighborhood, and you had a bunch of people. I guarantee it was. What does that mean? Funny. Wait, what does that mean? Because she came from the old people neighborhood over here. And, what, and who's in the new neighborhood? Young people that want to go out and watch UFC fights. Okay, okay, that was very PC. Very PC. I thought you were going. I thought you were going to take it sort of direction. Florida, there is young and old. That's the two demographics. I thought you were going to take that on a totally different. They don't watch UFC, especially here on the East Coast. And now she's at like the rowdy bar. So of course she said she could like people puking. She was like, I can't believe I have to deal with this. And I go, Yeah, because they're 24 and they're probably doing Jaeger bombs. Yeah, that's probably true. Good uh good handle on, on UFC three oh six. The sphere looked pretty cool. Um, could not afford to go because so we were me and our producers, John Oglin and Louis D'Onofrio, we were waiting for you to send us well, money. We lives in Nashville, so I wasn't going to buy him a flight. No, we, we thought you could send him a plane. A, a plane. Yeah. A plane. And then and then also Sphere tickets. That, don't you think if like I had tickets, I would want? Yeah. Touche. Let's go to Sunday. So, obviously, Sunday morning, the books did great. Right? I mean, the Dallas loses... I don't know. I barely even watched. Yeah, I mean, even though even though Chase Michelson bounced on my show very last minute, uh, he did send me three money line dogs that won outright. So I was already on uh, Minnesota because my buddy Jeff's like I love Minnesota this week, so he talked me into it. So I bet Minnesota money line, Saints money line, and then Packers money line. The only one that Chase gave me was the Panthers money line, which we all knew that that was just a bad bet. But he said, "Hey, these are our four biggest." Needs in the morning, and then uh, you kind of saved my ass on uh, Monday. I had an Eagle survivor left, and you're like, yeah, we need the Falcons to win this game outright. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to bed. I'm still hungover from Ariel's birthday, so I went to bed like three minutes after kick. I woke up at 3 a.m. I was like, ah, that, that survivor loss didn't hurt as bad, so thanks, Jam. Pays, pays to have friends in uh, low places. Very low places. Very, uh, we did... We did great in the morning. The Saints, I mentioned that. You know, we actually have a lot of money on the Raiders. So I think a lot of people would think that, that would have been such a big win for us. Now, of course, it was good that Baltimore lost for the money line parlors. But yeah. there was a lot of money on Raiders plus nine, plus eight and a half, maybe. Is that just because of being in Vegas? I don't I don't think so. Yeah, maybe. It is. I, don't, I don't know. There was a lot of money on the Raiders. But you know what? We had, we had a lot of money on the Raiders even when the team was based in Oakland. They were the most popular team out here back then, too. I, I don't know. We didn't clean up on that game as much as I thought we would have. Browns, we did really good on. The Browns, they went and they won in Jacksonville. And we did really well on on Green Bay beating Indianapolis. So but I, I want to go to the afternoon so I can complain. I'm better at that. We really needed Denver, your team. I hate them so much. That was my best bet. I, I all the dogs in the world cash. Except for, the, well, there was a couple I, of cash, but I can tell you that it. I have a bet on Denver over five and a half. Uh, I have, I have, a, I, I had, I should say, Denver in the other big football contest in town. I had, that was one of my plays on my, my five play card. And I, I didn't really get to see a ton of the game, but I, I did see some of the second half. And my question is, does Sean O'Malley know, or uh, Sean O'Malley, does Sean Payton know? that the game ends, that it's not just a forever thing where he can keep punting and kicking field goals. There is a ticking clock, you know, it's fire, and then the game will be over. Does your coach know that, Kelly? 
I honestly, at this point, I'm not sure what coaches know. Uh, Nick Sirianni, not sure what he knows. Not sure what Sean Payton knows. I, there, I'm not sure what Will Levis knows. Listen, there are there are football IQ plays. There are football coaching IQ plays, and every single week, we all go, "What the fuck was that?" Like at least once. And last week, there was at least three. We had a chance to really clean up in the big game Sunday. We needed the Bengals to win the game. If okay. the Bengals had won, we would have really, really cleaned up second half, everything. And, of course, on fourth and 16, they throw a flag. It, you know what, what What I found most interesting about that whole sequence, though, is I, I managed to go into the back room for the end of that game, and I asked one of the guys, like, how far is this field goal, Bucker's field goal? And I forget when he was, like, 53, maybe, 52, something like that. And – it was just so such a given that he was going to make it. I think that's one of the biggest changes in the NFL since when we were kids. You know, back then, a 50-yard field goal was, like, not even a 50-50 proposition. You know, I mean, when Scott Norwood missed that kick in the Super Bowl's 47-yarder, that wasn't even, like, that shocking that he missed. Nowadays, 53, 55 yards, it's almost just a given that these guys are going to make it. The kickers are so good. They're so good, and and honestly, I think that the – well, probably the coaching. Uh, the fact that a lot of these guys played soccer, there's just so much more to that side of the ball. I mean, when Justin Tucker missed the one in Kansas City, I was like, what? Like, he, I was like, He's been doing that lately, though. You know, he's, I mean, I know it sounds ridiculous. But he, I mean, he's clearly fallen off from where he was. He's old. Is that what it is? But can't, can't you kick until you're old? I, I don't know. I don't know what you can do. I, I, I don't make these rules. I don't know. My knee has been hurt since Italy. So, like, I am. You're not an NFL player. I'm not an athlete. I understand. It doesn't matter. Like, sometimes you just can't. You just never recover from injury. Yeah, it's very sad. Uh, afternoon didn't really go well. Arizona crushed the Rams. So, let's talk about the night game. Because I had, in that same contest, I used Houston. And I had Houston in the Survivor Contest. I liked them a lot. I thought they should have won that game by, like, 20-plus points. And they just they kept letting Chicago hang in the game. And they just they just would not put those guys away. Yeah, it's not like Caleb Williams was any good. No, Caleb didn't play well. And they, they end up winning by six. Did you see him after the game? He is His, like, attitude just sucks. You got a his real energy sucks. You got I'm going to Google his birthday. I... I'm going to Google his birthday. I have a theory on when his birthday is. Well, I can't wait for that theory to be explored some more. But I, 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 bet, I bet he's a Scorpio. How about that? You birthday. got a real hard on for Caleb Williams. I'm going to pick her out of this conversation. 2001. Oh, my God. Where? What is that? Mean? He's a Scorpio. I just told you I hate his energy, and I just thought of that in that moment. I'm like, I hate. There's something about him that I'm like, uh. And it's because he's a Scorpio. Caleb, Caleb Scorpio Williams. Men and I are like. He was born in 2001? Yeah. What day was he born? November 18th is what I just said. Oh, shit. So I, so I, because I graduated from high school in June of 2001. So that means that, because he went to my high school, obviously. That means that by the time he was born, I had already graduated from Gonzaga. And now he's in the NFL. I'm fucking old. I don't know what's. So Monday night, the Monday night game was Atlanta and Philadelphia. Now we, I don't see, I don't remember this. You said, that we had talked about using Philadelphia in Splash Survivor. I don't remember that conversation. I remember that we talked about Baltimore. I let me tell you, let me tell you what we played. I'm gonna look. Well, I, I got my I know. We Hold played. on. No, because I used the Eagles in one. My entries. Okay. So we no we you and I had used uh, Detroit. You and I had one Cincinnati week one that lost. You and I had Jaguars last week, Lions, two Lions. Yeah, the Jaguars is really for sure my bad. I had an Eagles, a Jags, and a Lions that lost. And then I had a Washington football team that won. I had two Washington football teams that won and a, and a Houston that won. And then you and I had a Washington football team that won. So you and I did not have the Eagles. I had one Eagles on my own. But pretty much almost anything we talked about doing lost because we yeah, we don't right. 
Yeah. Because we didn't really, you know, you tried to act like, like I talked you out of the Chargers on Twitter. That, like, you were trying to fall on the sword for me? No, but I literally you... said I should have just played the Charger. But I didn't want to. Like, I said. No, but I, I only threw that out there because I said they're playing the Panthers. We, we have... should have. That was the genius move of the week. But we had so many. And, and, and I know this is. play the Raiders this week, aren't they? Or are they not? We had so many sharp groups on Carolina last week, just like we had week one. And I'm going to get to week three here in a few minutes. I'm but I'm never going to take the Chargers. Never. I don't take my team want you. ever. But we should have used the charge. So now, so now we only have one entry left. Womp womp. And that's okay. We're for revival. I'm going to set it up here. Like I think. Well, that's fine. Like, well, let's talk, let's do. let's let's operate here in the current context. Yeah. Our producer John Hoagland said that the suggestions from social media, the number one pick is the Raiders. Told you, the Raiders are at home against Carolina. Carolina right. makes the quarterback change from Bryce Young to Andy Dalton. So, Which is at do, least a two point come up. I don't care what anybody says. Do we want? We'll talk about that. At the no, end we're not taking the Raiders. We're not. No, taking the Raiders. no. we're not going to listen to our, our listeners. No. Look what they did to us with Connecticut back in, in March or February. Okay. I don't take road teams in Survivor. The Raiders are not on the road, Kelly. They're at home. No. Yes, they are. The Raiders are at home. It's their home. Oh, I may have missed that. Okay. What do you want me to do? Do you want me to go? I mean, I'll get the schedule and see Raiders, where these kids in Scorpio. Seventy percent win probability. The Raiders are hosting Carolina Sunday Fine. afternoon at Allegiant Stadium. Fine. There's a better spot to take the Raiders. Give me one second. I gotta open up your spreadsheet. Better than home versus Carolina. I'm gonna tell you, there's gotta be. Uh, nope, there's not. Okay. Fine. The whole world's going to be on the Raiders. I don't care. Well, no, no, I'm so going to do this tonight anyway. I'm going to lose the box and my other one and probably well, the Bengals are. Let's talk about that because there's so many op- – it's a good conversation. There's so many options this week. I, My contention, and maybe I'll be wrong because I usually am in the NFL, my contention is that the number one pick is going to be Cleveland. They're at home against the Giants. I think they will be the most used. I think Cincinnati at home yep. against the Redskins will be really heavily used. I think and that- I, and I agree with you. Raiders and Bucks will also be very heavily used. I don't. I kind of like Jets because the Jets. But they, we we've seen sharp money come in on New York minus six. My only concern with that is, and I know New England's got a banged up offensive line. My my only concern. I did a show this morning with the uh, the Bear, Jeff Schwartz, and Will Hill. And Will Hill made a good point on the show. This is the second straight short week for the Jets. They had a short week after the Monday night game. in 10 days. They got a short week. Of... I just lost Vegas Murray. Did he hit the, did he hit the hang-up button on his phone? He might have. We're going to see if he comes back. I never, I I never even touched that anymore. That's weird. I was from too far away. Uh, no, we've seen really sharp money on the Jets at minus six. Now, remember, we booked the Thursday games at minus 105. So we moved it from minus six to minus six, minus 115. Right now, the Patriots are plus six, plus 105. But the sharp guys are on the Jets. Sharp groups are on the Jets. Jets money line, minus 280. I think uh, they're a viable survivor option here in their home. I, I keep going back and forth. I have the Jets in one splash, and then I have an office football pool that I've been in forever. It's a, a nickel buy-in for the survivor. And last it's $500 year, got, for you regular people. I got, uh, I got in pretty far. Tampa Bay is my best bet. I don't know what to do. I Part of me just wants to take the Jets and just run and just do what we did last year and just get a freaking win and, like, then cheer for chaos all weekend. Yeah, I remember that, man. That was that – was we actually – because me and you rarely do anything correctly as a tandem. But I remember, <laughs> I remember last year we took the Niners at home against the Giants. They won by, like, a million. And then we just sat back on Sunday and there was and all kinds of chaos. It was yeah, that was nice. I do that. That was a plan executed well for once, for once ever. Ever. Why don't I run through? Let me run through some sharp college plays, and then you can give your your college football card. Have you, have you decided on the rum ham? Uh, <laughs> on the, the chuckle double digit underdog. Does it have to be double digits? Yeah, they want a laughable long shot. Purdue ended up being Purdue close like plus seven. 
Right, but it didn't matter. They were double digits when I gave the video out. Okay. Also, so uh, well, the it's it's uh, USF plus sixteen and a half, which is now seventeen. So, and and I said that they're actually not the laughable team. It's Miami because they haven't fucking played anybody. Oh. So why is Miami in, in the top ten? I want to know who they played and what they've proven to deserve to be in the top ten. Other than they, they were beat, they beat uh they beat the University of Florida Gators. They were good fifteen years ago. Cool. All right. So anyway. So what about that's the rum ham play of the week? Also known as the chuckle rum play of the week. What about the hottie threesome or foursome depending on friskiness levels? Um, <laughs> so I really struggled with this. I texted you on Monday. I liked Navy, uh, so they were the number one play I put in. I think this is a really flat spot for Memphis. I like Jonathan Smith as an underdog shocker. They took six and a half with Sparty. I like them to win that game outright. We saw Boston College last week. They actually looked very good against Mizzou. I know some people that I, I would say that I respect played Mizzou, and that was the wrong side. Uh, but I do think that, you know, look, Sparty got a layup last week. They played a basketball team called Prairie View. So we'll see how this one plays out. And then the last one was really hard. I liked Georgia Tech initially. I did play them plus 10 and a half. And then I started looking at this Louisville team, and I'm like, maybe Louisville's a little bit better than – I quite realized maybe Georgia Tech actually can't win this game outright because, right, that's the whole premise. I like these teams against the spread, but, like, I want teams that can actually win a game outright. Like, if they end up losing, like, South Carolina, of course I'm going to bitch, but that spread was never in doubt. Like, never for – that's how the games I want. I want never – like, Cal, never in doubt. Like, I want to bet on teams that are you never won, in doubt. You won $2,500 in South Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. It was a lot of money. Yeah, and they were like plus what, two forty five. I could have won a lot more. Anyway, a lot of money here in the real world for us working. Folks. So, the last one I did pick was Northwestern. Northwestern, and uh, I love them as an underdog. They've been good to me. They're super scrappy. We know why because they have a really good defense. If they win that game outright, like I think it could ultimately be twenty one fourteen final. But if they win that game outright, it's going to be like fourteen ten. They're going to have to just completely shut down. Uh, I don't know why Washington's so broken. I understand they had people transfer. Obviously, Kalen DeBoer went to Alabama. But this team is 1-2 and two to start the year. That is not. Well, they lost. I mean, they, hold on. They lost their head coach. They lost their I said quarterback. That. I said they lost, they lost a lot. Team. I said they lost a lot. But you're one year removed from the college football playoff. Yeah, that's true. I think, they're, I think the expectation level was not to be 1-2. and two. Right, like no, you're right. That's right. Probably right. to start off three and zero. Probably wasn't to lose that Apple Cup to a team that doesn't have a conference. So oh, they don't have a conference currently. They are working on getting a new Pac-12 together. Mountain West 2.0. Okay, so let's go Maybe. through. I can go through all of your Kelly right. Custer already. What did Ariel Epstein want? Well, let's Ariel Epstein. We can, talk, we can talk to her after the show. What, what do these people do without me? I don't know. Navy, plus 11 against Memphis. Kelly already mentioned it. It's in the hottie threesome. Definitely a sharp side. Wyoming, plus eight. They're at uh, Texas. You know, I got Wyoming in my college football wins league. They, I think they're over. Yeah, they're awful. Not over. They're awful. Not good. I hate them. <laughs> Couldn't even Real stack noise. up at home. Say what? Nothing. Illinois plus eight and a half at Nebraska. That game's Friday night. Yeah, so I like that. This one's moved a lot, but the money came in on Oklahoma State. Sounds like maybe no Cam Rising. Yeah. So here's my question, and I don't ever disagree. I text last night that there was going to be no Cam Rising yet. We I haven't seen anything definitively that he's out, right? No, but I'm only going through by the sources. I have to look at the sources we have, and I have to look at how the line is moving. And I, I agree. But Cam Rising's been out of every college football game that Utah's played in the last two years, it seems like. If, or if Cam, them being out. Here's a Cam Rising question. If he misses one snap, does he get another year of eligibility? Is that the rule? Like it's, I feel like he's got his own set of rules. This guy yeah. ever – this guy well, never – Both quarterbacks are like your age. They probably graduated college in, <laughs> in 2001. A little bit older. They were a little younger than me. There are – so last week I complained about the college football slate a lot. This week – Michigan, Way better. U Michigan USC at the big house and 
Tennessee at Oklahoma. So I'm the first person to complain about conference realignment. I hate it. But with the, the SEC is so good now that they're every week there are these just off-the-charts off matchup. I know next week we get Georgia-Alabama. We mentioned in October we get Georgia at Texas. It's an incredible game for the regular season. Tennessee-Oklahoma kid. Everybody's on Tennessee. Everybody's on Tennessee. Of course they are. Even even when I did Sam Panionovich's show this morning, he goes, "You, this is, the, this is a hottie threesome special. I can't believe you're not in Oklahoma. I go, this reminds me of Texas, Michigan. It is the exact same thing. In June, they're the favorite. Then it starts to trickle, and then all of a sudden, the pendulum swings because Oklahoma's had a couple of crappy games. And by all means, I'd like to think that Oklahoma can turn it on at some point, but I'm not sure they can does Sam, because I love Sam, does he make little sarcastic, shitty comments about the hottie threesome like me, or am I the only one? No, he was just re- he was really nice about it. Like he had like respect, except for then he brought up the fact that his brother mushed me at Naked City, and then I just sat there drunk by myself because I was too drunk to drive home. And you guys were at the UNLV game, and I was like, I'm not walking over there either. So <laughs> just sat there at the office, shitty office bar, my favorite Vegas. That's not very nice to Chris Palmieri and the fellas, Corey and the boys. It's a great bar, but it's a dump. That's why it's a great bar. Good you can package liquor there. You know every time that bought a bottle of wine at Office Bar? Like, Yeah, I could see that. That that actually, you profile as somebody who would do that. Yeah. Do you want to... NFL. Is this, it resumes... So wait, there's Chris... only three college football sharp plays. For an eight, what? Wyoming, what? Illinois. That's it. Didn't I give Oklahoma State? Sorry, I was talking. Are you okay? Yeah, that's what those are the those are the standouts I see right now. Um, you know, it's still kind of early in the week, but yeah, I'd say those those stand out right now for sure. They, they look like uh, good stuff. Uh, I will say this: there was a guy that I do respect a lot that played Miami of Ohio plus twenty eight at Notre Dame. It's the game that your good friend Andy Samuelson will be attending on Saturday and Sunday. Okay, what is your what is your NFL best bet? It's the box minus six and a half, and I know everybody hates it. And then the other game I gave out is my, my, uh, I give out like a barking dog on bet on it now, and it was the Rams plus seven and a half. Now six and a half. So got a nice little CLV trophy there. Uh, look, this is a, this is a Broncos team I don't trust. We expressed last week. Bo Nix on the road against a pretty solid defense. Baker Mayfield yeah. got this team clicking. It might be, it might be a little bit of recency bias, but I'm going to be at the game. I like the Bucks this week to get the win by a sizable margin at home. Like, I would not be shocked in the slightest to be leaving Raymond James Stadium, and it's 31-10. to 10. Do you – I don't mind this pick, by the way, because Denver's got I, – I really like the Buccaneers, and Denver's got their own set of problems. Maybe we ignore our listeners and we use the Bucks and Splash Sports. We'll talk about that. Patty and I have one uh, Vegas contest left, and we're going to use the box because I let her, I give her the spreadsheet. I'm like, here's your options, and then she gets to pick. But, and so far, just so you know, she's picked every red team. We did San Fran, we did, we did Texans, and now this week she picked the box, and I'm like, are you doing that on purpose? That's not a, that's no worse of a system for picking NFL than the ones I use. So let me, let me tell you that right now. But let up. Uh, do you have to, it's like all your picks, do they have to have a sponsor, like theme and nickname? You got the, the rum ham, the barking dog. Basically, I'm just for sale. Some guy said to me the other day on Twitter, he goes, he goes, man, time's supposed to be getting tough. I go, what? I got I got three meetings this week with companies I've never even heard of that want me to sponsor. What do you mean? Life is good. I love Wait, who said that about you? You're you're that's ridiculous. Like, I think it's because I don't have like a mainstream like that like job like i'm not at bleacher report anymore i'm not at barstool anymore you know what i mean like where the those are your your employers your core employer right like where you get health benefits that are complete garbage this is more like i just do whatever i want which is I, cool. can i can i say that i feel like you've always done just whatever you want yeah that's fair uh sure sharp nfl i mentioned this one already the jets Okay. Minus six. That game is tonight against New England. I don't, I might, I got to tell you, I might be using the Jets in the big survivor contest in town, which, you know. I did. Me and Chris used them. There's two ways of looking at this. 
okay, on one on the one side, if somebody said, hey, it's silly to already be getting excited about something that's in week three, I would say, yeah, you're right. But then on the other side, there's 10,000 people out of this thing already. I mean, look at that million dollars in dead money already in the pot. So well, yeah, I think you got to take a look. At it. Uh, yeah. So in our, there's 3,400 people left out of a little over 11,000 in the million dollar uh, splash survivor, by the way. Okay. That's good to know. Well, Jets, yeah. just our Jets minus six. We touched on that. They gave us tonight. So we're using uh, the Jets. John might be using the Jets, too. I might be a Jets guy. I'm using the Jets. We're using the fucking Jets. J-E-T-S-S-S. -S -S, Jets. Jets. Wait, we are for ours? Or you yeah, I just hate it. I'm not, I'm not playing the Raiders. I don't like the Raiders. I like Andy Dalton. I'm, we're using the Jets. I am living and dying with Thursday night. Great. Because I, I am cheering for a massacre the rest of the weekend. Except for the Bucks. Go to Sunday. They took Chicago... Kelly's favorite team, Kelly's favorite quarterback, Caleb Williams, Chicago plus one and a half at Indianapolis. So a teaser spot. This is a really good teaser spot. You know, I like, I really like Indianapolis coming into the season. You know, they they've got a tough schedule. They played Houston, they played at Green Bay. We'll see if this is a get right spot for them against. Caleb oh, Williams. teams at home are really supposed to be a play on spot for Week Three. I mean, it's like sixty some percent. I got to find. I closed out of that earlier. Didn't think I need it for the show. Probably the marquee game of the weekend is in the afternoon in Jerry World at Jerry World. Saw some sharp money on Baltimore minus one at Dallas. So Baltimore, Baltimore, this is a big game for them. They're 0 and 2. Yes, we already know that. But they, you know, they play Sunday night football. They host Buffalo next week. And then a the week after that, they play the Bengals. They could theoretically, I mean, yeah, okay. they could start the year 0 and 5. Oh my um, God. Ariel will freak out. I mean, they. They have started the season with a really brutal schedule. The only quote unquote layup they had was last week against the Raiders, in which they somehow squandered a 10 point set fourth quarter lead. I don't know how they lost that game. They did. And now they're staring down the barrel of a really bad start. The only thing I can say positive for them is their you know, supposed main rival in the division, Cincinnati, is also 0 2. So for both of those teams, they've got that going for them. Yes. Yeah. But, like, this is a must-win game. I mean, teams that start off the season 0-3 don't make the playoffs. I mean, it's like a 34% chance. Well, it, it expands now because there's seven teams per conference. But, I, I mean, I, I do agree with you, though. It's this No, you're right. With, with there being Week 18, that does change the data long-term. But I think it was, like, 297 teams since whatever – went 0-3, and, and only 34 of them still went on to make the playoffs. It was, like, really a low number. So, stop me if you've heard this before, but the Sharp guys here at the Westgate Superbook are on Carolina. Just like, you know what it's starting to remind me of? Do you remember the great Cleveland Browns teams? This when, is exactly when, uh, when, uh, on it. When, oh, really? When Sean Pizer was that Sean 2014? 2014 or 2015? I feel like it was, like, 2016-17. They had Deshaun Kaiser. Every week they bet him. And every week the Sharp guys bet this team. Yeah, every and week. every week they bet against the Patriots. And, and, that was they, and they never covered. No. So I know I sound like a broken record. And you can say, after the game, you can say, okay, obviously it wasn't a Sharp pick, which of course it wasn't. But the fact of the matter is these are Sharp accounts. These are guys that beat us long term, and they're betting Carolina. They did week one. They did week two. They did it week three. It doesn't mean that that particular bet is a sharp bet, but it does. I am telling you that there's a sharp player, but an account that we look at as sharp. They're on Carolina plus five and a half. Do what you want with that information. Got to be smarter than that. I was not smarter than that. I listened to Chase Michelson on Sunday, and I had Carolina on the money line. Oh, and you know like what? Him. I could have went three and zero oh if I would have parlayed those three. Ariel said, "Don't parlay all four. Don't get greedy." We all like. And our hand goes harder eating the brunch. We all like Carolina. They and they got down thirteen to nothing. I was actually watching the game in my office with Ed Sammons. I won't get into the reasons why he was back here. He was back here with me, and we were watching the game together. I looked up. I go, "Oh, dude, it's thirteen nothing. Uh, it's over. We lost." Last one. They're doing two Monday night games this week. The late game is is uh, the Redskins at the Bengals. The Bengals are trying to avoid it all in three start two, but we saw a player we respect took eight. 
with the Washington Commanders. The Bengals, you know, the Bengals could easily be 2-0. and They lost the New England game because they kept fumbling at the wrong times, and they should have beat Kansas City, but they didn't. Do you want to do the mailbag? But they didn't. All right, Generals underscore George on X says, inquiring minds want to know who is taller, John Murray or Bryce Young? Yeah, we, we talked about this on Twitter. It's a good, really good question. So last time I had a physical out, yeah, six crazy. foot and a quarter. So six foot and one fourth. Do you think uh, Bryce, yeah, Bryce Young's 5'10", it says, and they usually lie on the depth chart. Me. So you're taller. Okay. Uh, Sportsbook and Sig on X says, on a scale of 1 to 10, how excited is John Murray for NBA? You know, Jeff Sherman got mad at me yesterday or the day before because I was talking about how I think the NBA regular season – sucks and is a complete waste of time and it's just total nonsense i like the nba player yeah, uh, yeah. i have no idea how to pronounce this then it pn on x and a pit anyway do you think there'll be over under 100 injuries remaining in the college football survivor after conference championship week okay let me open this back up well let me let me let me ask if i'm gonna answer a question with a question are they gonna who picks the games? Because I remember when Notre Dame lost to Northern Illinois, I remember thinking to myself, oh, shit, a whole bunch of people probably got knocked out of our contest. But that wasn't a game that was eligible for a selection. Who dropped the ball there? That should have... Because, that... because we said it had to be... Well... Who's the one team? All right. Yeah, but you can't play FCS school, and then we said it was only these conferences. So anyway, you dropped the ball. You did that. Uh, okay, so right now... Uh, out of basically 1,100, 980 remains. So I saw, well, I had, well, I'm, I had eight, and I only have four left. So That's because you put in UTEP on two of them, and you went to put in UTSA. Yeah, that was bad. Uh, but also, also, I had SMU, and last week I had Vanderbilt. This week I've got LSU and Indiana. Well, in a, in a college survivor contest, it stands to reason that most people would get through the first few weeks by just picking teams in non-conference games that are big favorites. Yeah. It's going to get a lot harder when you've got two pick weeks in conference Which play. is next week, right? It's not, it's not going to be that easy to pick two winners in conference games. Let me double check. I think it's week four. Hold on. I think it's the 28th. Uh, hold on. Week, pick, view all games. Nope. Where the fuck is it at? Uh, anyway, I think it's like, yeah, we have it written down. I think it's next week. You have to pick two. Okay, perfect. All right, next question. Gary in UFC 51 on X says, do you guys have any NFL futures bets? Yes. What is Gary, Gary N-U-F-C or Gary N-U-F-C? You know what I mean? Like Kelly in Vegas? I don't know. <laughs> I do, unfortunately. Why I am like N? If my last name started with an N, maybe. Anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing. You know, unfortunately, I got I got Denver over five and a half wins, and they, you know, they've got to play at Tampa Bay this week. They go at the New York Jets next week. Jets are going to everybody's going to play Jets up. next week. That's tough. That's tough. Um, and then I added, I did add something this week. I bet on the Bengals to win the AFC eleven to one, because I, I the one thing they have going was two things they have going for them. They play the Redskins, they play the Panthers, and they play the Giants. Three of their next four games. And like we already mentioned, Baltimore's 0-2 as well. And so, there's a third thing you're missing. The number one team in that division, have you looked at the second half of their schedule? Oh, Pittsburgh's schedule is really hard at the end. I believe. It. Yeah. So I, I, there's nothing, even though Cincinnati's 0-2. So what did, you bet them to win what now? The AFC. There's Just the no, AFC. Yeah. There's no real reason to sound the alarm when they've got the same record as Baltimore. They can still ride the ship. They're notoriously slow starters. Love the quarterback. Love Joe. They're plus 190 to win the AFC North. That's a tough division because they all. You, you've also got Cleveland in there. At one and one Let's see the what they are to make the playoffs. What do you have? You didn't tell us what you have. The Bengals minus 130 to make the playoffs. Uh, I have Patriots over five wins. I hope tonight's not one of those wins. I have the Bears under eight and a half wins. Hater. Hater. Let me see. Let me pull this back up. Um, I've got, oh, this is a loser. Green Bay Packers to win the NFC North. Bears to miss the playoffs. Already, already a loser. They got the same record as Detroit. 
I know. I'm just kidding. What was the last one? Jordan loves her. Uh, Bears to miss the playoffs minus 125. Dude, did you do these anti-Bears bets because you don't like John Hoagland, our producer, who's a Bears super fan? I or... just went against the Bears every single year. It's just like free money. <laughs> uh, let's see what else we got left on these questions because we're running out of time, John Murray. A plus plumbing, 12 on X says, JM, what would you set the odds for a doink field goal? Has the book ever discussed this? What What is that exactly? We're hitting up right but does it is it a doink is it a doink field goal and also has to go in? I don't know. Like 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 what if it hit the crossbar and then went in? Is that a doink field goal or is it just if it hit the, the goal post, the crossbar? I I don't know. I didn't ask the question. That's a very good rebuttal. I mean I think he needs to maybe maybe it is maybe there is like a set thing that that means, but I need more information. Okay. I don't know. I don't know what that means. Does it mean it just hits the crossbar, hits the post, has to go in as well. I don't know. Sorry. I'm going to skate Braxton Dart's dumb football. What the question? Was, oh, What's an oh, since oh, Liverpool? Oh, okay. Since Liverpool lost on Saturday, now the time to bet them to win the Premier League. Do you feel bad at all that you, you were rooting against Liverpool on Saturday? I um, also I bet against Man City earlier today. That was, that was, that yesterday. That was yesterday. I don't remember. The only know is that I saw it come across on Twitter, and I was like, I need some action. Fade, and it ended 0-0, zero, zero, or as you like to call it, nil-nil. Nil-nil. This is a great thing about sports. The great thing why about being a sport. Why is zero so hard? Why do, why do Europeans not like saying zero? The great thing about being a sports fan is you can go from, like, Saturday morning, Liverpool played horrendous, horrendous, lost at home, and then Tuesday they played in the Champions League, and they looked incredible. They beat AC Milan three to one. They looked awesome. That's the best part about being a sports fan. No, don't bet on Liverpool to win the Premier League. Manchester City is going to win the Premier League. They always do. They're a bunch of cheaters. Next one. Okay, last question. T. S. Finky on X says, "Has Westgate ever considered doing a Survivor contest?" Yeah, I, I've said now for a while. I want to do a reverse Survivor contest where you have to pick a loser next week. And I want to call it the biggest loser trademark. Okay. I want to do that. I don't think you can trademark the biggest loser. I think there was a TV show. But my many fault, losers. Many losers. Many losers. Many losers. Quirk. And yeah. are you, are you're not traveling this weekend? You're not going to any games? You're not... I'm going to uh, Broncos box on Sunday. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Uh, but I am staying in the great state of Florida. I'll be here. I'll be working. And I hope. It's a little cleaner than it was last yeah, Sunday. Chase Michelson doesn't call out three minutes before his shift on Wager Talk's last call. But I'm not going to be hosting anyway this week because I'm going to be at the game. I hope Chase is here. I hope he's here working hard. I'll talk to you next week.